Let's start with a, a discussion about pan-sophic learning. What does it do and where did the idea come from? So pan-sophic learning kind of is an extension of the previous company I had founded called K-12, and what we're, which really spread online education in the United States. Now what we're trying to do is do it on a global scale. So we, you know, we believe there's a great opportunity throughout the world to really bring digital education into brick and mortar schools, also online schools, so that you can give children more access to a high quality education at a lower cost. Now some folks watching this who are, who are not as well versed in the, literally the universe of education might say, well wait a minute, you know, we hear about all the problems that the American education system is having, so why would the world be looking to embrace things that you at Pansopic can present to them? What's well the I think, you know, I think the American education system has some issues, but there are a lot of great, great things about it. it for whatever reason, the United States is producing entrepreneurs at a rate that no one else is. So there's a creativity that comes with American education. And I, I think the rigor of it, a lot of the issues we see are demographic issues, not because the content's not good or what we're teaching isn't great. So what we see is most of the people in the world aspire to uh, education in the United States or Britain. So if you can create the, the K through 12 system or take these colleges and allow them to have campuses abroad, it's a product people want. It's funny because you, we hear oftentimes the notion, you tell me if this is accurate, that essentially education is one of the, the great exports of the U.S. Why do you think that is? Ameri be be I think it's because the, you know, the economic success of the United States you know, has created an environment where people believe the education system is a large part of that. And the universities in this country are Harvard and you know, the, their brand, their world brands, Berkeley. You know, so, so I think people aspire for that post-secondary education and it's considered the best, and it was created through an, you know, an amazing 300-year system in post-GI Bill, where every you know, a soldier had a voucher based at a college. That voucher competitive system created an amazing higher ed, and I think that hasn't happened in most of the rest of the world. So a U.S. education is aspired to, also with English becoming the global language of business, and you know, you look at, go to China, you look at the Alibaba IPO, right? These are emerging economies that are aspiring to create these kind of companies. So I think they, there's American education is a part of that, and they want a part of that. I think it's always interesting to people when they look at the entrepreneurs in the education space, and they say, why did he want to do that? Why did you want to get involved? In you know, for me, I think the world's going to be a lot better place when everybody has a chance at a great education, and so that every child can become whatever they want to become, which is my goal in education. So I started almost 15 years ago to, because I believe online education allows you to remove geography, so you can live in a rural area, you can live in a city, you can live in sub-Saharan Africa. Theoretically, you can get a great education if you have the desire to do so. So that's what motivated me. I want every child to have a shot at, at some success in life. And the only way that happens is if you can provide an affordable education to every child on this earth. There's such a drumbeat of dismay when we're talking about the educational system in the U.S. As somebody who's lived within it, are you optimistic that we're at least perhaps ready to move in a, in a, in a more positive direction? Um, I'm in the mildly optimistic. You know, I think there are enormous forces that resist change in education. And they resist it universally without regard to merit or you know, not merit for that matter. So I just think it moves slowly. It's a, a system that has not been bred competitively. You, know, you look at, a great example is telecom. So going back to the early 70s, there was a point where it was actually illegal to have an answering machine on a phone and you had a singular monopoly that was you know, AT&T. Look at what happened when AT&T was broken up and it became competitive. The cost of a long distance phone call basically has gone to zero. When I was a child, like we got one minute every two weeks we could talk to my grandparents who lived across the country. Now it's free, so you look at the innovation between cellular telephones and everything that's happened, it's because you created a competitive, innovative environment. You know, as that starts to happen more and more in education, the problems will be fixed, but if you have something that's insulated from competitive forces, it's going to take a long time. Ron, thanks for taking some time to Thank speak you. with us. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. Good.